This is for the open tag, three folders that everybody should try. First would be a Stockman. Stockman is such a versatile knife. It has three different kinds of blades. You have a clip point blade, and you can see the patina on this one. I usually use this for clean stuff, so it's always ready to use on food or when I need something that's pointy. You also have a sheep's foot blade. Just think of anything you would use a utility knife for. This, this blade excels at. Then you have the spade blade for anything that you need a, a good belly. So it's so versatile having three different types of blades. You always have a sharp blade and you have a blade for each type of use that you need throughout the day. Second would be a folder. I know a lot of people like the, the Para 3s and 2s, but I prefer the Manix 2. So one like this. This is a translucent blue. And this has an S90V blade. You can see the light shines through there. And these blue scales are just, just incredible. But you will not find this color in an S90V blade. If you look back in some of the videos on my channel, you'll see the Manix 2 project where I take apart these knives and I've done a blade swap. I've put an S90V blade in here that came out of a knife that had a really bright orange handle. This is my favorite color on the Manix 2 lightweights and this is my favorite steel that they come in. So that's one option, the lightweight. Could always go with the standard Manix 2. This one is an M390. And I've changed the cage and put a lighter spring in it. Same thing, I've also put a lighter spring in that blue translucent one. And probably my favorite in the whole lineup is the Manix 2 XL. This is quite a bit bigger than the other knives. This is in crew wear. And I've also changed the ball cage and spring in this one and also put different scales on it. Now, I like the Manix 2 better than the paramilitaries. And the reason why is the tip is a lot more stout. The tip on the Para series is a little bit too fragile. You can do a lot more with these knives and yet they still retain the same amount of sliciness. And once you put a lighter spring in this ball cage, the action on these is just incredible. It's much better than a compression lock. The third knife that everybody should try is an EDC fixed blade. Now fixed blades are great because you're not always cutting light things. Sometimes you have heavy duty use and especially on those days, it's good to carry a small fixed blade. Now, you can go too small. There's a lot of companies make these pocket knives or neck knives and they make the handle so small that you almost feel like you need a pair of tweezers to hold on to them. You need a good knife with a good handle that's comfortable and non-fatiguing to use when you have to apply some force. And of course my preference is one of my own knives. I made this as an EDC belt knife it is just barely small enough to throw in the pocket too if you, if you need to but as a, as a belt carry this thing disappears and you don't even know you have it with you now other options besides my knives are knives like the se Izula, which i do have an example here lt Wright, bark river and battle horse knives also make some great small edc fixed blades now, one of the advantages you'll get with my knife for a very small penalty. Okay, let me line the sheaths up in the front. And if you see, there's only a small difference in the handle sticking out the rear. So a very small size difference penalty. But what you get for that size difference as you can see you get more blade and you get more handle 
and you get a more robust knife. If you look at the thickness of the two, look at the thickness of the two and how stout the tip is. Mine is a convex grind and will handle some very hard work. This knife is a tool and that's what an EDC fixed blade should be. It should be a tool to get your jobs done. So this is my recommendation. Like I said, there are other good options, but I think a knife like this is as good as you can do. And I think close to this, I think Bark River has one that they call the, the Lil Canadian or something like that. That's a knife that's pretty close to this. It's got a different handle um, and it has finger grooves in it, which I don't like, but it's a very similar knife otherwise. And that would be a good option too if you want a knife in this class. Like I said, it's just one step up from those smaller, smaller pocket knives like the SE, which these are good knives and these knives can be improved. They do sell um, Makarta handles that you can bolt on and you can improve the blades on these. This one is my son's. Uh, I have sold mine because obviously I just use my knives. Um, on my the one that I had, I stripped the coating off of it and I put a convex edge on it, which greatly improved the knife's ability for cutting. SE, unless you make a custom sheath for it, there's a lot of space wasted up here because the knife doesn't come close to the end. You have this hole for a neck carry. So there's room to have to trim these down and make this a smaller package. But for the trade off on just a little bit of length, this makes a much better knife. It's also better steel and a better heat treat and a better sheath.